Hey, uh, how do I get a shh key? What the hell are you talking about? A uh, shh key. The DevOps guy sent me an email asking me for my shh key. Oh, yeah. That's called the silent key. It's a key that we use to get access to different resources out on the network. Okay, so how do I get one? You gotta get HR to give you one. So I just go ask them? No, it's called the silent key. That uh, sort of implies that we don't talk about it. So then how do I get one? Do you ever watch much baseball? Yeah, every once in a while. All right, so you know how in baseball, the catcher and the coach will send in hand signals to the pitcher to let them know what's going on? Yeah. Right, so we got the same kind of thing for getting the silent key. Okay, so then what's the signal? All right, so you're going to go down to HR and go down into the doorway at, of the head of HR. And it's got to be the head of HR because they're the only ones that can authorize issuing the silent key. So when they look up, you're going to make eye contact with them and then do this. And then just turn around and walk away. And at that point, they know that you know about the silent key. Are you sure? Because it kind of sounds like you're jerking my chain a little bit. No, I'm not jerking your chain at all. How else are you supposed to let them know that you know that they know that you know about the silent key? Yeah, okay, I guess so. Right on. Well, you better get on down there. We don't want to keep them DevOps guys waiting. All right, so here we are starting off in GitHub and I'm in my account settings under the section SSH and GPG keys. And you can see that I have added my SSH key here. And if you need to add one, you can hit new SSH key and it prompts you through doing that. You can also see when the key was added and when it was last used. And I recommend rotating these keys on a regular basis. So now what this allows you to do is execute git commands against repos without having to enter your username and password. So now the other thing that I mentioned that this allows you to do is access servers remotely without using a username password. We're going to do that using a command called SSH, which stands for secure shell. And then there's some different syntax that you can use with the command based on your particular situation. Let's start at the end of this command and work our way backwards. The last thing here is the IP address of the server that I want to access. And this can also be a DNS name if your server has a DNS name. We have the at symbol, and then we have the name of the remote user I would like to log in as. So I want to log into this server as a user named ec2-user. Now if the remote username was the same as my login name here on this workstation, I could leave off the username at portion of that and when I executed the SSH command it would automatically use the username from my workstation. Then we have this dash I and then the, the path to the SSH key that I want to use to log in. So one of the things that's unique about my situation is I have multiple clients and for every client I create a separate SSH key and that's just a damage control strategy right because Eventually, one of my SSH keys are going to become compromised, probably because I'm recording a video on SSH one day and accidentally show my private key. It's just damage control because then when that happens, I know which key it was and I only have to contact that particular customer. I don't have to notify all of my clients that I did something really stupid. So we'll hit enter here and then that logs me right into that system as the user that I told it I wanted to be no username, no password prompts required. Now all of that happened because this server has a folder on it called .ssh in that user directory. So every user account on a system will have its own .ssh folder. Again, in Linux world, the dot means that it's a hidden folder and this folder has to have certain properties. So if we take a look at the file permissions here, you can see that it's a directory and then the user has read, write, and execute permissions, and no one else has permissions to it. If the permissions aren't set exactly like this, 
your SSH won't work. So that's always a good troubleshooting tip is make sure that your directory permissions are set correctly. Inside of this folder, we see a file called authorized keys. So if we take a look at that, you can see my public key that belongs to the SSH key I use to access this server. And again, this is the public key. So it's publicly available. You can pass and share this around without issue because the way this works is when you execute the SSH command, your private key is used to sign that command and send it off to the server. The server there uses the public key to verify that it was signed by your key. So with that public key, it can verify something was signed by you, but it can't sign anything as you. That's why it's so incredibly important here that you protect your private keys and never let your private keys get out anywhere. So the final thing I wanna show you is how to create your own SSH keys. You're gonna use the SSH keygen command and then we're gonna pass it a couple of options. The first one we're gonna pass it is dash T telling it the type of SSH key we want to generate. Now, if you have a newer system, you wanna use the ED25519 type of key. If you're working on an older system that doesn't support that algorithm, you can use the RSA, which is still totally acceptable. But if you do use the RSA algorithm, I want you to specify dash B4096 for the number of bytes to make, to use to make that SSH key. The last thing we'll do in either case is a dash C and provide my email address showing that I'm the owner of that key. If this is your first RSA key or your first SSH key, it's going to prompt you for the name to put it and automatically suggest this ID RSA. That's kind of a, just a standard that the first key always gets that name. You can certainly override this if you want to though. And then you get prompted to enter a passphrase. For my personal SSH keys that I use for GitHub and servers, I usually don't provide a passphrase. And the key is generated, so if we take a look in the SSH folder now, we can see the IDRSA folder, which is the private key, and the IDRSA.pub, which is the public key. So since I just created these, let's just go ahead and take a look at them. So there's the public key, tells you the type SSH RSA, and then the last thing on it was where I provided my email address to tell you who owns that key. And if we take a look at the private key, which you're never gonna do, right? We're only doing it here because I created this SSH key just for the purposes of this video, and I'm gonna delete it as soon as we're done recording the video. But when you look at it, the key things to note here is it starts with the dashes, it says begin RSA private key, and then ends with the dashes, end RSA private key. And if you were to count them, there would be 4,096 bytes in between those two. And that's really about all there is to it. Common uses for SSH keys are accessing your GitHub repos and logging into remote servers. One cool thing that I do that makes this easier is I use Ansible, which we'll get into in a couple of videos from here for the configuration of all my servers. So every developer on my team will generate their SSH key pair. They will upload their SSH public key to our Ansible repo. And then when we run Ansible, it goes out to all of our servers and will create their user account and upload their public key to it. So then all the developers have access to the servers that they need to access using just their SSH keys. And it also makes it really easy whenever they rotate those keys annually as well, because they just update their key in the Ansible repo. We run Ansible and it goes out and updates it on every server that we have, whether that's 100 servers, 1,000 servers, or 10,000 servers, it doesn't matter. If you liked the video and found it helpful, do me a favor and click the like button down below and also click the subscribe button and turn on the notifications so that you get notified whenever I release new videos and I will see y'all next time.